come on the air with breaking news. Another norm busted. The President of the United States in a war of words with the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. Chew on that for a minute. The two men share a political party, but not much else. It started with Roberts' rebuke today of the President in reaction to these comments when from people- Trump about a federal judge who blocked his asylum ban. When people file, every case gets filed in the Ninth Circuit because they know that's not law. That's not what this country stands for. This was an Obama judge. And I'll tell you what, it's not going to happen like this anymore. Chief Justice Roberts writing in a statement, quote, we do not have Obama judges or Trump judges. Bush judges or Clinton judges. What we have is an extraordinary group of dedicated judges doing their level best to equal right to those appearing before them. That independent judiciary is something we should all be thankful for. And noting just how rare the rebuke was, the AP reports, quote, it's the first time the Republican appointed leader of the federal judiciary has offered even a hint of criticism of Trump, who has previously blasted federal judges who ruled against him. The president responding on Twitter, part one, we're eagerly awaiting point part two from those three dots at the bottom. Sorry, Chief Justice John Roberts, but you do indeed have Obama judges, and they have a much different point of view than the people who are charged with the safety of our country. It would be great if the Ninth Circuit was indeed an independent judiciary, but if it is, why, dot, 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 the president of the United States still thinking about that, joining us now... Uh, two former U.S. attorneys, Joyce Vance and Chuck Rosenberg, both MSNBC contributors, the New York Times reporter Mike Schmidt, who's bylined on a big new development in the Mueller probe that we'll be getting to soon, and Aaron Blake, senior political reporter for The Washington Post. Sorry, not on the Mueller probe, on the president's conduct vis-a-vis the Justice Department. But let me start with you, Joyce Vance, and you, Chuck Rosenberg. Um, On this breaking news, the the chief justice of the Supreme Court issuing what was a rare uh, criticism of the president of the United States on his unprecedented attacks on the federal judiciary and the president responding on Twitter moments ago. Joyce. Is that for me first? So I think this is an extraordinary moment to have the chief justice who has shown impeccable restraint in the face of criticism of the judiciary, who has refused to enter the fray, who finally feels the need to make sure that the American people understand what all of us as lawyers know, which is that the judiciary is independent, it's strong, federal judges don't think of themselves in terms of the president who appointed them, but they believe that they are set there to uphold the rule of law and to leave their politics at the door when they enter the courthouse every morning. It just so happens, Nicole, that I know the judge who issued this ruling, Judge Tiger, uh, in San Francisco. He is an Obama appointee to the federal bench. Before that, he was a trial judge in California. He is an extraordinarily well thought of judge. He clerked in the 11th Circuit for my father-in-law, in fact. But he is straight up the middle on this one. I'm glad to see the Chief Justice go to the go to bat to make the point that we can rely on our judges to be a check and balance even in this day and age. Chuck Rosenberg, I know a little bit from your appearances on our network and our conversations off TV how difficult it is for people steeped in the Justice Department, people steeped in the federal judiciary to speak out at all on any question of politics. The bar is is higher than it is for people like me and and, and people who've spent their careers in politics. Talk about what must have been going on inside Chief Justice Roberts' mind to take this step of rebuking the president. Yeah, it is extraordinary, Nicole, but I'm glad he did it, right? Nobody wants to enter the political fray if they don't have to. And the last group of people who don't want to enter the political fray are federal judges. But Chief Justice Roberts is in a slightly different position. He is the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. His words matter a lot. He speaks for the federal judiciary. By the way, I couldn't agree with Joyce more, but I have a point to add. Um, and I suspect she might agree with it as well. This is a, this is pet peeve territory for me because you read all the time in very good newspapers that this judge or that judge ruled on a particular issue in a particular case, comma, and by the way, they were appointed by President Bush or Clinton or what have you. 
I've spent um, years in federal court as a prosecutor in front of dozen, dozens of judges on hundreds of arguments, um, scores of trials, and I never, ever thought of them as an Obama appointee or a Clinton appointee. That's not what they are. There's a reason they have lifetime tenure. They are independent. I think Chief Justice Roberts is spot on. I'm glad he did this. Joyce Vance, it's not the first fight or debate that the president has had um, with a high-profile judge during the campaign. I think it was Judge Curiel who he attacked viciously, and it, it, it was the kind of attack that made even his own supporters uncomfortable. This is a president who never sees anyone in any job as separate from his own equities. Can you talk about what it must be like to be a federal judge under this president? You know, my suspicion is that the federal judges do about the same thing that Bob Mueller and his prosecutors do. They hear, they listen, they're human, and then they set it aside and go back about their work. One thing that you do if you're a member of the judiciary or if you're a federal prosecutor is that you learn to keep yourself insulated from political goings on in the country. They don't have a role to play in your work. They're not anything more than a passing curiosity. I think it's hard for people to believe this sometimes, but my own personal experience leads me to believe that there are judges all over the country who are saying, okay, you know, this too will pass. Now we've got cases to decide and, and parties to, to um, send on their way with the decisions that we make so that they can get on with their lives. Chuck Rosenberg, this too shall pass is sort of what we all say around our table every day. But do you see this as an escalation? We say this too shall pass about the president's attacks on the intelligence community. And this week, he disregarded their assessment about uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia's role in the killing of an American uh, U.S. permanent residence. We say this too shall pass and the president's attacks on the Justice Department just keep going. Is this, is, is this too shall pass the right posture? Or do you think that what Roberts was responding to was a sense of alarm? Well, I think we will now see a de-escalation, at least with respect to this dispute between these two men. Uh, Justice, Chief Justice Roberts said his piece. I'm awfully glad he did. But Joyce is right. Federal judges around the country, regardless of uh, who appointed them, will you know, shake their heads, you know, sigh, and go back to work. And so I don't expect that uh, this debate will be joined any further by the Chief Justice. He said what he had to say. I'm glad he did it. Uh, and this too shall pass, Nicole. Um, it'll pass. I, I, I agree with the idea that, 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 I mean, I think Chuck and Joyce are speaking um, with the mindset and the perspective of people like Chief Justice Roberts. But it won't pass for Donald Trump. I mean, when we came on the air, there were three dots. We're waiting part two of his tweet <laughs> storm. So how do you, I mean, there's an asymmetry always with Donald Trump because he resides in the gutter. Someone like Chief Justice Roberts has a much more important job, doesn't spend a lot of time in the gutter. Um, you did an incredible piece of reporting yesterday, but all the sort of the hypocrisy of all of the, the president's attacks on on uh, Hillary Clinton and on others. And th this isn't that, but this is another norm-busting day. And it's a continuation of a whole lot of different things. We mentioned the example of Judge Curiel during the 2016 campaign. Uh, there was also the instance early in his presidency when he made comments similar to the Obama judge comments. And Justice, uh, who was then the nominee, Gorsuch, also rebuked him in a similar way to how Justice Roberts is right now. I think this also connects to the story that we're going to talk about later with, with, that Michael wrote for The New York Times, uh, where the president is basically overstepping and trying to use the Justice Department as his own political arm. He is trying to break down kind of these traditional barriers. And the fact that he is now feuding with his own chief justice, a guy who could rule in his favor on some very significant pieces uh, of, of judiciary business in the coming weeks and months, uh, is, is rather remarkable and I think speaks to the continue, er, continued erosion of our institutions. It's hard to not see this as Donald Trump having an influence and an impact on yet again another institution, as you just said, the Supreme Court this time. But it's, it's also this larger theme where he, Donald Trump came to Washington and all of the nuances and things that people in Washington take so seriously, the keeping the FBI at arm's distance, not talking about the judiciary, not mm -hmm. talking about the stock market, he continues to just run into the face of that. He never was going to change and he hasn't changed. 
And he has not changed, even though he's been under investigation, even though some of this behavior has brought him under investigation for obstructing justice. And this just just goes right into that story, I think. It, it is a direct line. It, it, you know, as, as you mentioned, you were here today to talk about a story about the president wanting to use DOJ and the FBI, essentially the way other presidents of both parties have used the RNC and the DNC to prosecute basically public relations cases against his political opponents and his enemies. But it, it, it does seem that, and, and this was my question to, to Joyce and Chuck earlier, that the bar is so high for some of these people to engage. Do you think at the end of the day, Aaron Blake, more harm is done to Donald Trump? Or do you think that more harm is done to the Supreme Court? <sighs> Politically speaking, I don't see any really harm in uh, for Donald Trump in this. Uh, I think that, you know, while it's a well taken point that this is an ideal of the judicial system, that this these judges not be judged according to who they were appointed by, uh, this is something that all of us are aware of. And so when we see some of President Trump's executive orders being struck down by a judge out in San Francisco, we all kind of immediately look at that and say, oh, well, this was probably, you know, a more liberal judge or an Obama appointee. Uh, this is not something that is, you is outside of the political discussion, but once it is very delicate, and once you take it beyond, you know, just mentioning who these judges were appointed by, and you say these are basically doing the bidding of Barack Obama, you are stepping over a line, and you are taking a very delicate situation that the American people generally don't understand and can be very easily influenced on, and that can have a very significant impact. Do we have uh, the president has finished his thought? Um, let's see if we have that. All right. Sorry, Chief Justice John Roberts, but you do indeed have Obama judges, and they have a much different point of view than the people who are charged with the safety of our country. It would be great if the Ninth Circuit was indeed an independent judiciary, but if it is, why, dot, 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 are so many opposing view on border and safety cases filed there, and why are a vast number of those cases overturned? Please study the numbers. They are shocking. We need protection and security. These rulings are making our country unsafe, very dangerous and unwise. So I guess the caravan ran out of its political usefulness to him. He's now beating up on the Ninth Circuit, Chuck. That does seem like um, a very Trumpian tactic and a very, very political argument from the president. It is a political argument from the president. We shouldn't be surprised by that. But if I may humbly offer a, a brief history lesson. In U.S. v. Nixon, the Supreme Court case in which the Supreme Court ruled unanimously 8-0, one justice recused, against the president, four of those justices were appointed by President Nixon. In Clinton v. Jones, in which the Supreme Court ruled unanimously 9-0 against President Clinton, two of those justices were appointed by President Clinton. This is what we mean when we talk about uh, the independence of our Article III judges. And so... The president is a political actor and the head of the executive branch, but the judges are not political actors, regardless of what the president calls them. They are simply not that. Mike Schmidt, you're reporting on the flashpoints in, in the obstruction of justice investigation reveal, at best, grave ignorance about what, what uh, Chuck, is, I think, is describing the independence of the judiciary, grave ignorance or, or malfeasance about the FBI and DOJ. How goes the education of Donald Trump from his lawyers, from his White House counsel's office, from figures at DOJ who interact with him? Well, the, but there's, there's a thing that I think we're sort of missing here, which is that the president could find himself in a fight with the Supreme Court. So if Mueller wants to subpoena him and wants him to answer questions, then all of a sudden Trump will see himself in an adversarial position with the Supreme Court, and John Roberts is going to be in charge of making that decision. Because if there is a subpoena fight, it will probably end up in the Supreme Court. So this is sort of an interesting foreshadow here where... You know, I, I, the president didn't go out to pick a fight with the chief justice, but now he's he's pushing back. And maybe in six months, the fate of a subpoena is sitting in front of uh, the chief judge. I can't imagine that this fight would impact that, but it sort of adds to the drama of what could come. And Joyce, it's a great point because it does show us how Donald Trump will approach any fight with the Supreme Court or any decision making process that ends up there about a subpoena for him. Right. Any fight that he loses in court will be the fault of his political enemies. Just like he wanted DOJ to prosecute his political enemies, he'll go after judges. And when he does this, I don't think that we can say this enough, Nicole, he continues to erode these foundational elements of our constitutional republic that are critical to our system functioning the way it's supposed to. 
Trump doesn't believe in checks and balances. He doesn't believe in an independent judiciary. He doesn't believe in an independent Justice Department. Instead, he wants to, to bring them in as political arms of his administration. And that's as dangerous for people in the future who don't know who the president might be down the road, but might need an independent judiciary to support them and ensure they're treated fairly as it is for us today as, as we approach Trump trying to erode all of these norms that are so critically important. Aaron Blake, the politics of this seem like a giant loser for Republicans. And I haven't seen, I haven't, I, we've been on the air for about 15 minutes. I haven't seen if any Republicans have come to John Roberts' defense. But for a while, for a period, pre-Trump, he was one of the, his appointment as Chief Justice was one of the Republican Party's greatest accomplishments. Now you have Trump, the Republican president, attacking him. Do you think there's any uh, uh, suspense in trying to figure out what side the Republicans have come down on, or is this Trump's party, even if the chief justice is the target? I think, as with most issues with Trump and the Republican Party, it's not a matter of whether they come up out and line up behind him or line up against him. It's a matter of whether they say anything. To the extent that they say something, they will be critical of this. Uh, these are people who believe in the institution of the Senate. They believe in the institutions of the American government, including the judiciary. So if they say something, it is going to be critical of what the president is doing right now. But what we're seeing more and more is that they're just not saying anything. They don't see the fight as being worth it. They see the president hitting back against critics, and they recognize that whatever they say, it's just going to blow back on them with the base. This seems to be one of the things that, that even the president's appointees in the Justice Department have been surprised by, that when Devin Nunes goes after them, when he wants to declassify FISA applications, when he wants to sort of bust norms in terms of how the Justice Department runs investigations, there's been some surprise that no Republicans come out in their defense. And, and in fact, with, with Democrats taking over the House, there some, I think, are probably looking forward to having a little bit of a backstop there. Do you pick up any sense of, of surprise from, from folks in law enforcement that there are no voices in the Republican Party who push back against Trump when he obliterates these norms? I'm not sure. I, I mean, the, the question will be is that if if this behavior continues, do they ever, at what point will they actually really say something? What would be the breaking point? Because Trump constantly You'd goes up to this line. we've seen it by now. He goes up to this line and, you know, some Republicans criticize him, but it really doesn't really go any further than that. What would Trump have to do to push them? What would change that? If he fired Mueller, would it change that? If he, you know, tried to, you know, make the acting attorney general, the attorney general, you know, permanently? I, I don't know. And I think that's what we have to watch going forward is that, if Trump goes any further, he kind of walks up to this line that, you know, is, is a little bit gray enough for the Republicans and, you know, just kind of gets criticized a little bit and continues on. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.